You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Mahalo Wellness, Cairo Health USA, The Goodman Factor, Cairo Moguls, Local Gold, Cairo Thin, McCaffrey's Clinical Mentoring, and Chiropractic Rocks. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 151 of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. I'm your co-host, Luke Millett. Here's your host, Jim Chester. So today we had the opportunity of interviewing Dr. Lawrence Tham. And if you want to know more about certainty in your practice and learning how to do it from all angles and being effective with your communication, stay tuned. This is episode 151. We have uh, Dr. Lawrence Stam. You're coming in from Australia. Um, That's pretty cool. You're uh, one of the first Australians we had a chance to have on our show. So this will be a good international. Oh, perfect. And uh, as per our usual, we have a series of questions we'll be going through with you. If you do want to talk to us about anything that's going on currently, please do. But um, first things that we always ask our guests to do is to share their chiropractic story and what influenced them to become a chiropractor. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me on guys. I really appreciate this. And for those of you listening, you might be going, well, he doesn't sound Australian. Um, Well, the reason why is I actually have a Canadian accent. I'm actually from Canada, but I've been in here in Australia for uh, close to 19 years now. Um, So I am an Australian and Canadian. I'm a double citizen, Jason born of chiropractic, I guess. Um, Guys, I started chiropractic. uh, Going back to my story, I was in in Canada. I was uh, wanted to become... I wanted to become a doctor because my mom was a foot reflexologist, but I didn't want it to. So I had an influence in terms of, um, you know, natural and alternative medicine. So I kind of went into that path of going, I want to be a doctor, but uh, I didn't want to go in that traditional medicine route. And so I kind of started exploring, I actually studied becoming an ergonomist, uh, you know, anything to do with ergonomics. I was going to be working for, you know, big companies uh, like General Electric. And I actually did do some uh, co-op work when I was in the University of Waterloo. But Something in me just knew that I had to go change my path. I actually saw a chiropractor who was very uh, much like a more of a physio type of chiropractor in Waterloo, but uh, it got me interested in helping people uh, in the sports arena. Went to CMCC, applied there, went to a whole bunch of schools as well in the States uh, to try to see which one I wanted to uh, consider to go to, and then eventually ended up at CMCC accepting me. After the first year, I just figuring out like, what is this chiropractic thing? And I went to a seminar. I remember in second year, I went to a, a Thompson seminar and, uh, and that just changed my outlook on what chiropractic had to offer. You know, that was when I introduced the philosophy, I got to introduce the principles. And then I started realizing that the, the career that I thought I was going to enter um, switched dramatically in that m- one moment. And then that's when I started exploring a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and then took me down the journey of, um, you know, moving towards the chiropractic journey that I'm on now. So I ended how I, th- I know the question will be asked anyway. So after I graduated, I actually, um, one of, uh, CMCC, WCTS, uh, when I was through school and, and I, uh, went to Australia and I fell in love with it. And so when I came back and told my wife, I think we should consider going. So you, as soon as I graduated, wrote my exams in Canada, I moved to Australia to spend a year here, but within two years walking on the beach every day, on the first month, uh, in the middle of winter, I thought, this is life. <laughs> I, sh- I think we should stay a little longer than a year. So that one year became two and two became, uh, you know, 19. And so we're both here now and, you know, our parents moved over and so on and so forth. And we have kids here now. So that's my life's quick life journey uh, in chiropractic. So what would you say makes you unique in the chiropractic world? What makes me unique? Well, I think we're all unique individuals. I think uh, one of the things is that with chiropractic is that we have a fundamental principle and we have a fundamental belief, but also I think we add an element to how we bring into the picture. So we have our own experiences, our own histories and our own educations and our own backgrounds. You know, me being Canadian, Chinese, Australian has a different vibe than anybody else. And so I think all of us can bring that uniqueness to our practices. And I think that's, for me, I've always, so I transitioned uh, out of practice actually about six years ago. Um, I moved towards, uh, you know, coaching chiropractors because that's where I felt like I can create more impact. I felt like I had done enough in chiropractic. I, you know, had a very successful practice and I just couldn't, I didn't feel I could do any more. And so I left that profession, I left, left chiropractic in practice and traditional practice to move into chiropractic uh, coaching. So what I, one of the key elements I teach is something I call the line and amplify. And so alignment means is that it's aligning your practice to who you are as a person. 
I'm not a practice management where like, oh, hey, follow this system and you'll be successful. Because to be honest, like, I don't, it might be successful for like 10% of the people, but the reality is that I believe everybody should find a way to practice that is uniquely yours. So for me, it's like, I think the, the lesson here I, I want everybody to take away from is that whatever you feel alignment, stop listening to me, like speakers like me or speakers like anybody else. And, and, and have this pedestal of going like, this is how practice has to be. I think, I'm not suggesting that that's not right, but I think what we got to figure out is what's right with us. You know, what, what's aligned with who we are? But oftentimes what we get lost is that, we, you know, we have all these speakers and we, they set up a certain pedestal on what practice should be and has to be. And therefore, now we're comparing ourselves cons- consistently to them. And, but the problem with, with, with comparison is that you, you're always going to be behind and you're always going to feel like I'm not enough. And that, that inner voice speaks louder and louder and louder. And that, that becomes a huge problem with us. And so therefore, you see a lot of chiropractors are really just trying to chase something they don't even want. And when they get there, even they go like, what the hell did I do this for? I just sacrificed like five years of my life to try to chase something I don't want or need. And so then now they just lost. And that's sort of how my journey went through. I went, I know I had my dreams and vision of what I wanted in chiropractic and I achieved it within three years. And then I go, now what? And I spent the next five years in practice trying to figure out um, what I actually really wanted. I mean, I was successful, but inside I wasn't, you know, like I was successful on the outside, um, but inside I was still craving for more. And I think for us, it's, like, it's about finding that inner alignment within yourself. And then once you find that alignment, then you can amplify it, right? Because then you can, because when people see the true you, and we all know this, anybody listening to this or watching this, you know that when a patient gets you, they, because that's because you've been authentically yourself, right? And when you're when you're resonating at a certain frequency, people get you. Like people who are watch, listening, or watching, or listening to your show right now, they get you, Jim, right? Like they get you guys because you guys vibrate at a certain frequency. And people watch or listen to you one podcast, and five minutes in, they go on, I don't want to listen to this guy. Or you know, they you, they might have already turned off by now, right? If they hear my voice and go like, I don't want to listen, they're already gone because I don't vet, vibrate at their frequency, and that's okay. And that's the thing with chiropractic is that we don't have to vibrate at the same frequency to everybody in your community. You just need to vibrate specifically to the, the people that you want to see. So that's the amplification. When you amplify at say, you don't know, thirty three hertz or whatever it is, then all of a sudden, like the people at thirty three, thirty two, or thirty four, they will be able to hear you. But if otherwise, and people who are at 72 hertz can't hear you, but that's the point. We only want to really attract the people. That's how, I mean, for a new patient strategy, you want to attract the people that you want to see, not everybody with a spine. You try to go after everybody, your message will never resonate because they can't hear you because you're not being specific to that frequency. Yeah, you said something there that I really want to touch on is uh, the people that speak from the stage. That's like best case scenario people. And those are the people that have like earned the opportunity to speak to the people in the seats. And uh, every chiropractor mm-hmm. that goes to a seminar, they see the best case scenario people up there telling them how they need to think Absolutely. and act and do. And then you take somebody and yep. you say, hey, best case scenario person's on stage telling you who's kind of trying to figure out the building blocks to a practice and how to communicate. And I'm sure there's, like you said, there's 10% possibly from each of those people that are going to be like, you know, digestible and usable. Like they say, we're going to give you stuff that you're going to be able to go back to practice and use it Monday morning. And, you know, I always love the old saying that there's never been a better time to be a chiropractor than now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, that hasn't changed in 20 years or 30 years. <laughs> Whenever I heard that first time. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, honestly, with today's day and age, there's never been a better time to be a chiropractor um, in the current stage of uh, what we're transitioning into historically. And I think mm. that that's kind of been the sentiment for the past 30 years is that transitionally we knew that it was upon the chiropractor to be able to um, be righteous in their practice, deliver the goods, implement the things that they learned from the best case scenario speakers, um, and then go out there and uh, save lives. And I think yeah, that, that so hasn't me, changed. Well, I think here, here's, I think what, what the takeaway is this, is that I think the fundamental principle and the why we do what we do hasn't changed. And that probably won't change. And that's why it's always the best time to be a chiropractor. However, the key element of what we need to understand is how we communicate that has changed. That is no longer, like when I graduated in like 2002, the messaging I used to do back then is no, is no way the same as I do use it 20 years later. There's no way exactly, I mean, remember 20 years ago was 
9-11 happened, right? And now it's like this COVID-19, like it's like 20 years apart. And you just think back then when I graduated, there was no um, Facebook, there was no YouTube, there was no Twitter, right? And now we're getting information in real time. The landscape has changed and it will continue to change at a rapid pace. And the, the, the difference is, is that what we got to understand is the principles don't change, right? If we fundamentally philosophy and the principles, what we do don't change. Chiropractic will always be relevant in my belief. However, it will only stay relevant if we adapt our communication accordingly to the times we're living in. And the years as we move on from year to year is moving at a much faster pace, which means that the lines of communication has to adapt to that change. I remember I started a podcast nine years ago, I think, maybe eight years ago. It was one of the very first podcasts that anybody's ever done. You know, we were going, this is going back, way back. I was like one of the originals. We had started something called the Wellness Guys. And it was like a um, long, long time ago. And we did that for six years. And we had a, like a whole, and it still exists right now. I'm no longer part of it, but it's called the Wellness Couch. And we had 20 plus wellness podcast shows on that network. I mean, podcasting was the medium and is still the medium right now. And it's going stronger and stronger. But then the, so, but the message, and you can notice like 20 years ago, we didn't have that platform. You had to go on radio shows, right? But I remember I got that idea to go on podcasts through my good friend, one of my best buddies, Jamie Richards from Life by Design. You know, we were classmates through school together. And I remember seeing him going on London radio because he was in London. He was on radio. I'm like, man, that's good. And then when the podcast thing, I'm like, wait, we can, I can broadcast my message online, you know, but this is going back eight, nine years ago. And that was like the idea. So therefore you just got to learn to adapt to like new technology, new mediums, and then try to jump on that. But also you got to watch, it's not the medium. So we get caught up in the tactics, the tactics, meaning like, Hey, let's uh, use podcasts or let's use video because that's the thing to do. It's not that it's about the medium helps you. Like the tactic is the, the actual um, zoom or Facebook live or whatever. That's the medium. But how you communicate in each of those platforms changes dramatically. Like how you um, communicate on Twitter is very different on how you communicate on YouTube. And even though video, YouTube and Facebook Live are two, like it's video, but how you communicate on YouTube is very, very different on how you communicate on Facebook Live, right? And so therefore we just got to recognize the different mediums like Instagram is a totally different medium. And so therefore all three of those platforms, YouTube, Facebook and Instagram say the top three, how you do videos in each one has to change. Even the formatting is different, right? YouTube is widescreen, right? Instagram is, you know, uh, portrait mode, right? Facebook Live could be either landscape or portrait, depending on your mobile design. It's probably starting to move from landscape to portrait. So like things you just got to think about, about how we communicate, not just the tech stuff. We haven't been talking about the communication, how your messaging needs to be. So really quickly, I just want to back up for a moment. Uh, you said you run a coaching program. Yeah, that's right. So I coach clients from all around the world. So I got clients here in Australia, in the in Europe, and also in the United States. And so, what, what I help them. The program, if people wanted to look it up. Yeah, if you want to just look it up, it's basically on my on my website. It's called lawrencetam.com, or just go to Coach with LT, which is Lawrence Sam, Coach with LT.com. Um, my my program itself is uh, it's called Nitro, and I have a, what I'm really in. Um, what I'm really about is about helping you get aligned on M5, but more importantly, to help you get profit and more freedom. Because I think what happens is that most chiropractors right now is that they want two things, right? They want more profit, but let me define profit. Profit means it's the value that you create to the world, right? And that's the value. Profit is the value that we get in exchange. We want more of that, but we also want more freedom, freedom to be able to do the things we want to do. And I think I find more and more chiropractors want to do other things, you know, make more better impact on, on the world. And so that's what we try to kind of help you create. The thing is what, what's important, I believe, is it's not just the coaching around. So I do three things. Specific. Number one, we got to work through the mindset. The thing is, is when someone's drowning, the last thing they need is taught more skills on how to swim, right? So the thing is what we got to do is for most of my clients, we got to start. It's not about keeping more swimming instructions. What we need to do is remove the anchors that are holding you back in the first place. This is why I mean by like practice management, although it works for some certain people, but those people that work on that, that works is usually people who are already ready to take it on. But most of us are held back by our own fears, are held, held back by some internal voice and held back by, you know, judgment of others and fear of just whatever, all that fear stuff is there. We need to remove some of that first. 
so that you can actually move forward without those anchors. The second thing then is creating such such a strategic plan. You need to have a plan of action exactly know like know where you got to go. You have somehow process. So first is identity. We need to switch identity, which is the mindset. Number two, you have to have a process. And the third thing you need to have is you need to have some sort of action. And you need to have a group, with Jim and I were just talking about this, you know, have accountability, right? People that you look after, like I have a group to call Nitro, and the reason why I call it Nitro is because I believe I'm not the smartest person in the room at all. I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I want to collect smart people in my room, in my group, so that people can rely on each other. Like-minded people coming together create a spark to help them accelerate into their own lives. And that's that's the whole goal we're trying to create. Because I think together we rise together, we work together. That's how we're going to be able to create. If we want to move this profession forward, we got to work together instead of trying to, you know, fight against each other we, and I mean, we all know that but in this right now the heart, the world in the moment we're doing right when it was the time of this recording we're having a hard reset right now in the whole entire world and this is the time we can make a decision do we kind of work together on this or we're going to continue fighting and uh, and it's going to bring the best of us and also going to bring the worst of us as well so we'll see how it goes You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Mahalo Wellness, Cairo Health USA, The Goodman Factor, Cairo Moguls, Local Gold, Cairo Thin, McCaffrey's Clinical Mentoring, and Chiropractic Rocks. Let's hustle. So do you have any uh, words of wisdom or inspirational quotes that stick out in your mind? Any favorites? Uh, any favorites? <laughs> uh, on the top of my mind, um, listen, I I love um, the, the one thing I can think of right now on the top of my mind is this, this right behind me. You can't see it on the podcast, obviously, but if you're on Facebook Live, you can sort of see there's uh, Muhammad Ali, um, signed Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. And one of the things that Muhammad Ali, I, I'm going to butcher this quote, right, but it talked about being a champion. The champion is not one in the ring, but it's actually in 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 the training of becoming a champion. It's never in the ring, it's the preparation. And I think what happens is that what we we all want the glory, right? We all want to be that speaker on the stage. We all want the, the top thing. But what we need to evaluate is not, you know, not just wanting it, but we got to figure out, right, three specific things. What we got to figure out is the identity. What what identity do that, does that person hold to be able to do those things? What processes do they actually have to do to kind of be that person? And number three, that's how they get to come, right? So Muhammad Ali was an amazing champion, but that's the outcome. But he had to have a workout regime that to, for him to do that. But his workout regime required him to have a certain identity that he knew in his mind that he was the champion in his mind first before he was ever a champion in the world. You know, I think he even said that he was a champion in his mind before he was a champion in the world. So that's the key element is that we need to, what we got to figure out is those three things, want, get, get the identity right, get the process right, and then we're going to have the outcome that we want. And it's like the old saying, like, uh, people don't care really how much you succeed. It's the things that you do in between the success that matter. Like you have to, you know, the things that you do when no one's watching are the things that you have to mm-hmm. pay attention to yourself. The people Absolutely. that are going to see how successful you are is because you paid attention to the things that no one noticed. And that's I think right. that that's how we create champions and that's how we create champion chiropractors is it's the days in between the success that you're shown and you're recognized for. Like when you become top chiropractor in your city and they do a write-up about you, it's the things that you did in between that made that article possible. It's getting right. asked to be on a platform like Cairo Hustle um, that it was the things that you did in between in order to get the publicity to be featured on a show like this. It's the things exactly. that we do in between um, the success and the, 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 the reckoning that matter to us the most in this world. And I think that a lot of times people don't uh, equate the daily uh, motion forward as success. And they just think about like, you know, the five car garage or the big home or the, the whatever it might be, the opulence. That's success to most people. But I think chiropractors are a bit more of a different breed that the daily uh, activity of serving is success. So mm-hmm. chiropractors have a different looking glass when it comes to success, in my opinion, because it's about the give, love, serve, and it's about the fundamentals of practice. Um, but when the fundamentals of practice get bestowed upon them, they might not have, like you said, the blueprint. 
they might not have the the strategy and the, the paradigm for the outcome that they're looking for. And they get lost in the give, love, serve, and they fail to know how to build a business and the practice that can generate the income to give them the things that they're looking for with their doctor degree. Absolutely. And the key element here is that, you know, what you talk about is that I see a whole variety range of chiropractors who come to see me and, and I was, you know, speaking to people around the world and the chiropractors are, there's going to be a certain group, like this is why, you know, let's use a stage, for example, if you go to a, a chiropractic seminar, you got a hundred people in, in the audience and the speaker says, you know, here's the thing and here's the thing you need to do, right? I would say 10% of the people would take that stuff and they'd just be really super successful with it. We already talked about that. But then there's a third, a third of the group that's going to be like trying to take that stuff and they, they'll work with it and they'll get a little bit okay results, right? And there's a third of the other, you know, the other half of, of the group is that they don't, won't do any, they will do it, but then nothing will happen. And the reason why it's not because of the process is wrong. It's not that the, the steps are wrong. It's not the blueprint is wrong. It's that your, your fear is the one that's overriding you from actually actioning the right steps. And what I mean by that is this. Most chiropractors that I speak to care, they love, and they want to serve, right? As, as you mentioned, the problem is that that alone can't, I won't help someone to rise because I'm guarantee you there'll be listeners right now and goes, yeah, I care. I want to make an impact. You know, I, I love my clients, but how come I still can't grow my practice? And the reason why I would suggest is that you want to think about is the possibly reason why you're doing, why your practice is not growing is because the things you know you need to do the fear of doing that is overriding, it's overriding your mission of what you should be doing. And so what I ask people to do is to think about is that, is that this chiropractic is a very lonely game, right? Being in the gym is a very, very lonely game. Like training by yourself and doing the work is a very, very lonely game. But you don't have to do it alone. You can reach out to people. There are people who are there to guide you, to kind of put you in the ring when you don't want to be. There's days where you just don't want to train, but they're holding you accountable to train. That's the whole point. Like that's why every athlete has a coach. It's not because of, you know they're not good enough. They're not like they have no skills, right? No, they have a coach. I'm not, I'm not suggesting you need to coach me, but I'm just saying you need to have someone to guide you through the hard times. It could be your partner, right? It could be your spouse, but it's, it's got to be someone who's going to hold you accountable to, to your mission. But it, because it's very hard to do it on your own, but you also have to have a strong mission. You have to have a strong why, because that why is going to get you to get up from that mat. Because Mike Tyson has a saying, Mike Tyson says, I'm, by the way, I'm not even a boxing fan, but I don't know why I'm using all these boxing analogies, <laughs> but Mike Tyson used to say is that, you know, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. Right. And so that's what, yeah, blueprints are awesome until we get punched in the face. Right now, in this moment, at the time of this recording, we're all punched in the face. Like it's, we're knocked out, but you have a choice, right? You have a choice to stay on that mat and go, freaking hell, I'm not getting up. Or you go, no, I'm getting up because I have a purpose. I have a reason. And then no matter all the fears that's going on in your head, you, that, why has to be strong enough to override the fear that you have inside your head. That voice inside your head, that lizard brain is the one that suppresses all of us, me included, hands up here. I have that voice. I'm not standing here saying I have no voice. I, I can get through anything. I can't. There are certain things that stops me from doing the things I need to do. I'm working through this just as much as you. Anybody who tells you who is like, I got their, all their stuff sorted out, they're lying to you, right? Everybody has their fears. Everybody has that inner voice. It never escapes us. What we need to recognize and be aware is that that voice will always be there. It never goes away. It will be there to the day you die, right? It's our job to get up every morning, pull out our sword and slay that freaking dragon. That's our duty. Just slay the dragon every single day. The worst part though, it's like a freaking video game because the, that dragon appears every single day. Again, even though you slayed it yesterday and the hundreds and thousand days before it comes back. And sometimes you just gotta be aware that that dragon wins. And it's okay because like, it's like a video game. You get to come back the next day too. So I feel like Strange the Dragon is such an important analogy because you got to sharpen that sword. It will get easier. You will get stronger and something and the dragon will, it won't get weaker. It would just, you just get stronger. And that's the whole point. And if you have that awareness and just recognize and be gentle on yourself, that will help you get through any particular thing moving forward. So let's talk about you personally a little bit. Um, what books are you in the middle of reading? Do you listen to podcasts also? And what are some of your hobbies? 
Well, okay. So let's try to go through the list. Um, I'm multitasking, man. You're asking me to multitask. Um, so a couple of things. Uh, the book I'm reading or I've just finished reading is actually Simon Sinek's Infinite Game. Um, I'm actually going through it a second time. I really love it. I, I love his concept about the infinite game that this is not finite. This game of success or business or life is just, if we play the infinite game, um, it changes the context on how you play it. Like it's sort of different. It's like, you know, I love sport, you know, um, and I love the sport of competitiveness. But when business, we almost treat business like a sport, that there has to be a winner and a loser. But in the infinite game, it's it's very different. If you see, have the mindset that infinite game is that it continues with, with or without you. It's the game that you play with your son or your daughters when you're throwing, the, throwing a ball and you're just catching because there is no purpose to it. It's a game that continues and it can always continue to play. There's no winners or losers. I think if you see business and life that way, um, I love that concept because it changes fundamentally how you do and how you view success. Um, I listen to, I don't read books very well simply because uh, I'm a very slow reader. So therefore I listen a lot faster. And so you can see that I speak quite fast. I do apologize for that. Um, but, you know, just listen faster. And the reason why I, I, I speak this fast, I believe, is because I listen to all my audiobooks and all my podcasts in two times speed. Um, and I've been doing that for probably over 10 years. And, uh, and I've been listening to that because I can get, you know, an hour podcast into half an hour uh, or a half an hour podcast in 15 minutes or an audiobook of six hours and get it down to three. Um, and, you know, it's something you train uh, in your brain to do, but I've just been doing it for such a long time. I just love sort of speeding up uh, my podcast. So that I do listen to podcasts a lot. Um, and, you know, the next question would be like, what kind of podcast you listen to? I think my suggestion on that is like, instead of listening to what I listen to, I think what you should do is like, just go find podcasts that you are interested in. That's the most key important point because I think oftentimes is that um, most people are trying to like trying to figure out like what's the best podcast. There is no best podcast. What's the best podcast for you? And so, for my uh, my, my knowledge, I want to listen to people who are a sh- who's a chef. I actually listen to podcasts who are um, who's you know in acting or in a producer. Uh, so, for example, I would listen to like Brian Koppelman at the moment, and he's the uh, the writer, the screenwriter for Billions. You know, he brings on these eclectic types of people that I would never hear of because if I just listen to chiropractic, then you know, obviously listen to Kyra Hustle. I mean, that's the one key podcast you should listen to in the profession. But outside of that, I think you want to stretch yourself a little bit because you get different ideas. It's like going. I mean. For those of us who've been in this profession a long time, like you've been to every single sem- seminar you've ever been to. I mean, has the message really changed that much, right? And so, but if you only get stuck in that type of model, you're only going to hear the one single element. And that will sure reinforces the one idea, but then there's the whole world around us that we can get ideas from. That I love getting ideas from from a from David Chang, who's uh, you know, from like Ugly Delicious or Momofuku, and then get some ideas on how he's an artist as a chef. Then I can get someone who's an artist that was a writer on a on a you know very popular TV show and how do I how does he become an artist and how do I become an artist? So I listen to entrepreneurs and you know a whole bunch of eclectic type of things. I would listen to sport. I mean, I'm a 49ers fan, so I might listen to like that. Because I will get some ideas from those ideas to help my clients kind of be better and become champions in their own life. So I hope that answers your question. And the last thing is, what is what are your hobbies? What do you like to do outside of chiropractic and coaching and uh, listening to podcasts and, and listening to audios? Yeah, so um, anybody who follows me is I travel a lot. Uh, I love traveling. I love creating a new experiences in my life, um, whether that be with my family or um, you know events around the world. Um, so I've been running my coaching program for the last six years and the last three years, I really dialed down to what I really love and which is facilitating. And, uh, so we have run events all around the world. I run events in Florence. I run events. Uh, I just came back from Marrakesh, uh, in Morocco. Um, I run events, you know, in Byron Bay and, you know, all these, um, just different Spain, um, Barcelona and all those places and different places around the world. I run those about four or five times a year. And the reason why I love doing that is because I want to experience those places. I want to experience different cultures. I want to experience different way of life. Uh, I also want to t- take chiropractors to be in those positions to kind of take their sums away from their business and take themselves away from their own life to kind of reset. And, uh, and that's, I feel like it's such an important thing. So that's for, from a hobby perspective, um, my hobby is actually traveling. Um, I love doing that experience. Um, I CrossFit, that's something I do regularly. I don't know if sure that's called hobby or torture, um, but that's something I, that I do. 
Um, outside of that, I enjoy my sports, uh, you know, as much as I can from Australia, it's really hard with my team is in San Francisco and I have been, had a great run this year. I went to the Super Bowl, even flew up to my minute and, uh, and, and did that. Unfortunately, I had a last minute, 10 minute, you know, buckling, uh, of, of the loss, but Hey, that's, that's life. But, you know, creating experiences, just going to going through that experience of just going to the Super Bowl, like last minute within a week, I was actually in Bali and, uh, and then I had to fly from Bali to Sydney to, 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 to Miami, like within, you know, over two days just having that experience, like any new experience for me is, is a, a very important element for me to discover new things about who I am and, and where I want to be in my life. So, because really I think experience is what matters most. Well, Lawrence, I know we're coming up to the edge of our time together today. We have about three more minutes of recording time with you. Is there anything that we didn't touch on that you'd like to share with our audience today? Yeah. You know, I think, um, I think with the chiropractors right now uh, in, around the world, I think we're in a very unique position uh, and in a unique position that just because of this reset around the world, I think we have a unique position to be leaders. And uh, if you're watching this Facebook Live, you know what position right now we're in. And I think I encourage you to stay, have faith and be uh, move out of fear, which is the fear that you have right now is, is, is consuming. It's consume, being consumer of the fear of the news that's all around you. And this is not just in this moment, but any time. And I think what we need to shift from is fear to faith. And the faith is that we need to have is be a creator. I think, you know, going back to the right at the beginning of this, this podcast is I talked about you being in alignment. I think my suggestion is that you need to start creating. Definitely listen to a whole bunch of different people, but take their ideas and just going, how does that fit into my life? How, does, how am I aligned with that? I might be aligned with 10% or 20% of that message. Great, take that and go, but how do I apply it? Right, don't copy it, right, apply it. Artists all steal from each other, but stealing isn't just like, oh, this is just mine. No, no, don't do, like, take the idea, but then go, how do I make it my own, right? Stand on the shoulders of giants, you know, be in that. Say, so if we do that with each other, we be better, and uh, that would be an amazing thing, because then all of a sudden our chiropractic profession becomes stronger because we're all loving what we do, and we're all unique in that way. And the second thing I would love to kind of say here is, is that I believe that you know, for us to kind of move forward into the profession of what we want it to be, I do believe that we need to speak our truth. You know, the truth that comes, that's in your heart and your head. And the best thing you can do is learn how to communicate that, right? Find a way to communicate. If scripts help you to kind of get started, great. But typically I kind of move away from scripts and move a framework. Have a framework that allows you to speak authentically to your patients, and it will change based on the person you're speaking with. So I would really encourage anybody, if you're going to learn to um, learn a skill that you need to master, is the skill of communication. Learn to take ideas in your head and the, the love in your heart and blend those two to communicate a message that resonates to your patient's mind, to their worldview. I think what we need to do is stop pushing chiropractic to people, and what we need to do is have us just take one step back and really be um, focused on understanding um, how to um, absorb the information and really kind of be in that position of understanding their worldview. When you can understand their worldview, then all of a sudden it changes the natural game because what happens is that when you understand their worldview, you're going to be able to be appreciative of them as a human being. So I have a saying, and I'll leave you with this, is human first, chiropractor second. I hope this helps you in some way. I hope this is uh, impactful into you in some way. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to pursue chiropractic and, you know, have that strength. And uh, we do this together. So... Well, we, we come to the top of the hour with you. We thank you for being our guest today. And in Cairo fashion form, we just, uh, Cairo hustle fashion form, we just want to say thank you and uh, have a great rest of your day. And I know you have another interview coming up. So uh, let's catch each other soon and uh, let me know how we can serve you and help you as well. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on and all the best. And, you know, continue doing what you're doing because it's changing the world. Okay. Thanks, Lawrence. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.